Um, so thanks everybody for uh, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Ross Mahan. I work for the Google Education team, and I'd like to introduce you to Eric Kurtz. Uh, Eric is a, a technology director at North Canton Schools. Did I say that right? Yes, um, North. Yep, North Canton. North uh, Canton in Northeast Ohio. Um, he's been using Google Apps for two years now, and uh, he's going to give you a bit of an introduction as to his session. Hey, thanks so much, Ross. Um, yeah, um, this session is called uh, Creating Comic Strips with Google Presentations. So kind of a fun one. I mean, we've had a, I've, I've got four sessions today, so it's been kind of a crazy day. Uh, we did one on using Google Forms, one on the paperless classroom, and following this right after, I've got one on rolling out Google Apps. Uh, and so this is really the fun one. Uh, and But it's really cool. It's, it's a really neat uh, idea for what you can do with your students as far as using Google Presentations for comic strips. Now, um, I'm going to do a, a quick intro here at the beginning, and then, and then we'll sort of get into things, um, just to give you a little bit of an idea of, of the flow of things. I'll probably start off the session with me doing a little bit more uh, talking as far as you know, running through uh, the ideas behind using Google Presentations for Comic Strip. I'll make a real quick one, just kind of show you how that's done. But then I'm going to try to leave as much time after that for you to ask questions and, and, and have comments, and we can really get into your interest um, as, as we move on after that. Um, I'm going to start off real quick by sharing uh, my screen here and uh, giving you a couple of resources that are going to help you in this session. So let me go ahead and pull this up real quick. Um, and what you've got here is um, a, a link that I'd like people to be aware of. Um, all of the resources related to this session can be found using this uh, tiny URL link. It's tinyurl.com slash Kurtz19, so my last name, C-U-R-T-S, 1-9. Now, I'm going to go ahead and also copy and paste that as well as a few other links into the uh, comment stream for uh, this session so that if you're uh, looking in the comments for the session, you'll be able to see it there as well. So let me go ahead and do a quick copy and paste. Let me scroll on down here. So anybody who's watching the comic strips uh, session on uh, the live stream, I'm now pasting. Oop, there it is. Just pasted that in there. And I'll throw it in the chat window for the people inside of the Hangout as well so you guys have access to that. So basically, the tinyurl.com slash Kurtz19 link, what it's going to do is it's going to shoot you out to this page right here. And um, what, what you'll find here are all the resources that we're talking about. So the presentation uh, that we're going to run through that talks about creating comic strips, a sample comic strip, and then there's a help guide here all about Google presentations because you know there's a whole lot more to Google presentations obviously than making comic strips. And so this link here to the PDF will take you out to this, uh, looks like it's um, about a 13-page or so document that um, I put together for my school district that goes into great detail all about uh, creating, or not creating comic strips, but all about using Google presentations. And so anything you would want to know about Google presentations, hopefully you can get in there above and beyond what we talk about uh, in here today. All right. So um, so that's, that's a link where you can find all of those great resources that will help you with this session. Um, before we get into um, using and uh, to creating the comic strips with Google Presentations, I'm curious of the people that are here right now, if any of you have done comic strips with your students in the past, um, and if so, how you did it, and what, what was the purpose behind, why did you choose the comic strip as an option for being able uh, to have students do a product? So I'm just going to pause for a second. Is there anybody in the Hangout right now? Or if you're watching live and you want to post something in the stream there, just curious for people who have done this in the past before I jump into my presentation on doing comic strips, uh, anybody have any, uh, any feedback on that? I don't have... Um Headphones, so I don't know if you're going to get feedback when I'm talking, but I... You sound, you sound good. Okay, all right. Um, I've used comic strips before um, with a personal narrative for uh, bullying, and so they, they had to write a personal narrative, and then they turned them into comic strips. Um, just something different, something new for them to try and do. Oh, excellent. Uh, were you having them use any technology, or was it just paper, pencil kind of stuff? No, we used... Uh, Oh, I can't remember what it was. We just did it last year, and this year I'm doing it on uh, Toontastic on the iPad. Okay, excellent. But last year it was a website that sure. I used. Sure, sure. Okay. A a anybody else experience with uh, using comic strips in the classroom? If not, that's perfectly fine. Just wanted to uh, 
mention that real quick before we launched? I've used it um, with my um, ninth grade students as a closing activity for World War II. So um, they uh, created a set of stories. Um, I was like four or five groups, and they all created different stories. And uh, just paper and pencil, that's it. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> all right. Well, with that said, let me go ahead and uh, run through some information about using Google Presentations for this. And so uh, the first thing, just real quick, is why, why you would have students create comic strips to begin with. And I think there's a lot of good reasons. Uh, certainly, it just is another option because sometimes it's like, oh, I'm, am I going to do another slideshow? Am I going to do, do another shoebox float or whatever the case might be? And so it's nice to have an option for another project. But I think it does allow for a lot of creativity. It uses a f uh, format they are familiar with, and so something that they can get excited about. Um, you can incorporate both visual and written information in comic strips, and hopefully it can help improve their narrative skills, because that's really the focus of that. You're telling a little story, and of course, it's, it's fun. So a lot of good reasons to do a comic strip. Um, now, what sort of things could you, you know, why would, or what sort of things could students do with comic strips? Uh, there's so many possibilities. Uh, just a couple that uh, came to mind. One would be they could use it to illustrate a concept from class. You know, maybe uh, it's science class and you've been going over properties in science and they need to make a comic strip that, that illustrates that property in action. Uh, they could retell a story or maybe just a portion of a story from something they've been reading in class. Maybe the comic could reenact a famous scene from history. Uh, maybe they could do a comic about themselves. Uh, something that's autobiographical, um, or uh, this is one that we'll be do doing as an example here in just a little bit. Uh, they could use it for vocabulary words. Um, one of my uh, sons is in is in third grade, and we always are doing vocab every week. Got some words to work through, and so sometimes we come up with creative ways to remember them. And I thought, you know, a comic strip would be a fun way also to learn your vocabulary words. So there's so many reasons why you could use that in a class setting. Um, but now the question is, why Google Presentations? Um, as you heard, there's many options, paper and pencil, or um, apps for the iPad, or websites that are out there. And they're all excellent. Certainly those are all good ideas. Now, now but why might you use Google Presentations? Well, certainly the first thing that's great is that it's free. We all love that. And so you don't have to worry about paying for any kind of software for that. You can also use your existing apps accounts, and so students don't have to learn a new username and password. They can just log in as they are. And there are lots of options for being creative with Google Presentations. If you haven't looked at Google Presentations since the update, you're really missing out on a lot. Last year, they really did a big facelift to Google Presentations, and there's lots and lots and lots of tools in there now that make it a much more rich uh, program than it had been in the past. You can add animations to your comics, which is fun. Instead of it just being a still comic, you can have things coming in and going out, which is great. But you can collaborate with others, because keep in mind, Google Presentations, it's all online. It's cloud-based. And so it's a great way to be able to maybe have several students work on a comic strip together. Of course, then when you're done, very easy to share that for viewing. So it's basically, it's just, you know, a, a, a website in the end, and you're putting that out there for people to be able to scroll through and, and or s click through and see your Google presentation and see your comic strip online. And of course, like we said, everything is accessible online, so students can get to it from school, from home, from the public library, from wherever they need to to work on it. So a lot of good reasons why you might try Google presentations for that. Now keep in mind what makes it a comic strip and not just a slideshow, pretty much the fact that you're telling a story. It's, it's a narrative, you're probably going to have some cute visuals in there, and typically some speech going on between the characters, although you might not have to have that. But those things will probably go into making a, a good comic strip. So, how do we do this? Well, like I mentioned before, there's a PDF link that uh, is on the, uh, the presentation uh, resource page that tells you all about using Google Presentations. And Google's help pages are fantastic as well. But what we're going to do is we're just going to get into the specifics of using it for a comic strip. Now, instead of going through the slideshow, I'm actually going to make a comic strip here in a moment. But just be aware, this slideshow does talk about creating backgrounds and talks about, you know, uh, creating your own or inserting them, characters and objects. It gets into speech bubbles. It gets into animations. It talks about transitions and word art and grouping. There's a whole lot more in this presentation, and you can certainly go through that later on. We're actually just going to go ahead, and I'll go ahead and close out of that, and we're going to look at an example comic strip, and then we'll go ahead and just make one. And in doing so, hopefully, I'll be covering the same material in a more interesting 
interesting way because you'll actually watch it getting created. So this is just a really simple, I mean, it's very, very short. It's very short and very simple uh, comic strip uh, about science concepts. So let's say this is your project for the kids. Hey, guys, we've been learning these things in science. You need to make a comic strip that illustrates something that you've learned from one of our science concepts. So uh, there's our first slide, and we move to the second one. And uh, the robot says, hey, penguin, what are you doing? And the penguin says, just studying. And so next slide, the robot says, so why do you have a book on your head? And then we go to the next slide, and the penguin says, well, it's for, it is for science class, so I thought osmosis might work. Okay, so obviously he's trying to just absorb the knowledge through his head there, and then the student could finish up with a definition of osmosis on the last page of there. So really short, really simple, but it'd be a nice way to show do you understand the concept and kind of put it in a, in a, fun, uh, a fun way of showing that. So with that said, let me go ahead and let's make a real quick comic strip. I'll go ahead and close out of that one. Let me bring this back up here. And we'll go ahead and we're going to go to Google Docs and we're going to create a quick comic strip and hopefully touch on a lot of the, the, the different tools and things you might want to be aware of with that. All right, so here I am in Google Docs, which is now Google Drive. Now, if you haven't switched over to Google Drive yet, it basically is Google Docs with you know, the extra abilities that we now have with syncing to our hard drives and things like that. But basically, I'm going to go to Google Drive, and I'm going to click on the Create button, just like you go to Google Docs and click on the Create button. And then in that dropdown, I'm going to choose to create a presentation. So I'll just go ahead and click there. All right, now as far as creating a comic strip, probably the best thing to do is start with the most blank type of a presentation you can because most comic strips, you know, you're not going to want necessarily those color schemes. You're going to want to make your own. So I'm going to start with the most simple one here, uh, simple light. Just go ahead and say OK, and it's just basically a blank um, slide there. Now, I could use the title and the subtitle, but I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and create my own. So I'm really going blank here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the title and delete the subtitle out of here. So it is a totally blank slate. And basically, each slide here is going to be a panel of the comic strip. Now, for the one I'm going to do as an example here, I'm going to use my son's vocabulary. Um, this last uh, week, one of his words was foundation. And it was meant to be meaning like the foundation of your house. And he was having a little bit of a hard time with that. We you know, would go through the words, and for some reason, and that one wasn't sticking real well because I guess he's never really had much reason to, um, you know, think about the word foundation under the house and all that. And so we tried to make a little visual thing for him. And I said, okay, picture that you're out there with your shovel and you're digging and you're digging and you're digging under the house, hoping to find some awesome buried treasure. Um, and you know, then your brothers come out and say, hey, well, what would you find? And basically you can joke and say, all I found was the foundation. And then that helped him kind of connect that idea of a little picture in his mind that he found the foundation under the house. So let's say that your assignment for your students is you're to take a vocabulary word or words from that week and you're to make a, a comic strip about it. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll do the robot and penguin again because they're, they're kind of cute and we'll use them and we'll do, we'll kind of act that out. So. First things first, we want to start with getting maybe uh, an interesting background here. Now, as you saw earlier, I just had colored backgrounds, and that's perfectly fine. All you have to do is you can just right-click and go to your background, and you'll see that you can choose either a color or an image. Now, if you want to go with an image, that's great. You can certainly say, I want to insert an image, and there's so many great options now. Oh, my goodness, I mean, you can upload images, you know, you can put in a link, you can take a, a picture with your webcam, uh, you can go to your Google Drive, or you can just do a search. I mean, you can do a, a Google search. If we were going to do one that, you know, was like for a forest or something like that, you know, we, we could search, and it would bring back all sorts of, you know, really good pictures that I could throw in as, as a background. So you definitely could put a regular image there. Or the students could just go and pick a color. So you know, I'll just go and I'll say, let's make it, um, uh, we'll do like a, a red background. Um, now, I'm probably going to want to go with something kind of light. Um, so I'll just go with a regular, uh, we'll go with this one right here. We'll go with this red background, and I'll say done. And so now it gives me a red background here. And that's perfectly fine. We can be done with it there and say, hey, I've got a great red background. On the other hand, if you want to put a little bit of style in this, one of the fun things you can do is you can insert shapes, and you can have a shape that's just slightly off color from that. And so I could go in and I could say, let me grab like the oval tool. And I could draw an oval here. And then I could say, let's fill that oval with a slightly lighter red, and we won't make, we'll make the, the uh, line transparent. And then I could take that oval, 
kind of twist it a little bit here, drag it out a bit, and I could make, you know, kind of a cool design. Now, nobody will see where it goes over the edge. They'll just, they'll just see, we'll do something like that. There we go. And so now, if I were to run that slideshow, uh, they would get a nice square here. They wouldn't see where it goes over the edge, but I've got this nice two-color, you know, kind of scheme going on there. So that can make it a little bit more of, a, of an interesting look to the background. Um, I do need a title. So um, another thing that's fun to do with Google Presentations is to use word art. So if I go up to insert, I can say I want to insert word art. And um, we'll put in the title, robot and penguin. And we'll go ahead and enter that. We'll turn that a little sideways so it looks kind of cool. Move that up a bit. We'll change the font to impact so there are a little bit bigger letters there, a little thicker letters. And then let's go ahead and uh, change some colors. Maybe we'll fill this with um, blue. And we'll give it an outline of like, you know, dark blue. Or, oops, that was, sorry about that. Fill it with blue and an outline of dark blue. All right, there we go. And so I can have a really cool title there at the top. Um, if I wanted to put in my uh, my name, certainly I could just do insert a text box, throw a little text box down here, and do, you know, by Eric Kurtz, and have my name down there. All right, we'll make that a little bit bigger, and awesome, there we go. Now I need my characters. I need robot and penguin. Now here's where you got to think, where am I going to get my images for my comic strips? Um, you certainly could go insert image and use a lot of the tools Google has. Like we could use their search feature here. And we could search, you know, I could say I want a robot and I'm going to search Google for that. Well, I'm probably going to get pictures of robots. Well, thankfully, they do have some other options, including their stock photos. So I could search the Google stock photos for a robot. And those are, you know, a little bit more toward the idea of clip art. But they're still probably not really what you're looking for. So I haven't personally, now it depends on what you're looking for. Maybe you'll find just what you need. I haven't found typically what I'm looking for for cartoons or for comic strips in the Google search. Instead, what I would do is I would recommend you take a look at some websites, and they're all listed in the presentation, and um, you can get to them in there. Um, and one of them is a site called Open Clip Art. There's a lot of great websites out there that have public domain, um, you know, open source clip art so you're not using something that somebody else has copywritten. Um, and this is one of the really nice ones, openclipart.org. Um, and what's nice if I come in here and type in something like robot is it brings back a lot of really good matches for robots. Um, I think my little robot that I used is on this first page. Here he is. Okay, cartoon robot. So I'll go ahead and choose him. And once he comes up here, there he is. The key is deciding what format to save this guy in. And what you want to do is go with something that has transparency. And what I mean is, if I just grab him without transparency, he might have a white box all the way around him. And when I put him into the comic strip, you would see that white box everywhere. So what I encourage people to do is to use the PNG format. Okay? And if you click on the PNG format, it'll go ahead and open that up for us here, give that just a second here. And the PNG format typically has transparency in it. So if I come in here now and I go ahead and I, I can save him, if I want to save him and keep him, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I could just do a copy paste. So I'm just going to come in here, I'm just going to copy, okay? And I'm going to come back over to my presentation here, which got enough windows open here. There we go. And I can come back over here and now I can do my paste. And you'll go ahead and paste him in there. And you'll notice that he's got transparency. So I can put him on top of things. I can move him around. And he's not going to have that white box around him. So I can resize him and put him where I need him to be. So there's my robot. Let's do the same thing for the penguin real quick. So we'll head back over here and we'll grab penguin. Do a real quick search. And I think my penguin that I usually go with comes up pretty quick too. There he is. So we'll grab my penguin here. And again, I just did a copy paste. Just if you're on a PC, control C, control V works fine. Copy paste, or you can right click to copy paste as well. Um, let's go ahead and pull up penguin here in PNG format. 
I will just go ahead and copy him, pop back over to my comic strip, and I will paste him in. And there's Penguin, and we'll shrink him up a little bit. Oops, there we go. Uh, still a little tall, make him a little shorter there. Okay, so very quickly I have Robot and Penguin, and I've got my nice title slide there, so I'm ready to begin my comic strip. Uh, after that, basically it's going to be a matter of inserting my next slide. And so if I go up to my uh, plus button up here, I probably just want a blank slide. I really don't need to do anything you know, too, too fancy with it because I want to add the stuff in myself. So I'll go ahead and make a blank slide. And on this slide, I'm going to have Robot and Penguin talking to each other. So let's save a little bit of time. Let's come back here and let's copy Robot. And let's paste him in. And let's come back here and let's copy Penguin. And let's paste him in. And so I can very quickly bring, once I've got them once, I can bring them back into the other slides real easily. All right, so now on this one, I want them to be talking to each other. So a couple of things need to happen here. Um, I'm going to need to talk about speech bubbles and how we use those. But uh, based upon what they say, I may need to bring in some other objects, and we'll see that here in a second. So let's go ahead and let's have robot talking. To do speech bubbles with Google Presentations, you're going to go back to your Insert menu, and you're going to go to Insert Shapes. And what you'll do is go over to callouts. So insert shape and callout. Now I'm going to use this rectangular callout for the robot. He's a, since he's a robot, we'll keep him rectangular there. And then for the penguin, I will go ahead and insert shape callouts. We'll go with, uh, I'll go with more of a circular one for him. And we'll get him put in there. And so at this point, I could come into these uh, callouts, and I'll go ahead and recolor them real quick. We'll go ahead and make this maybe white, uh, and we'll make this one white as well so that we can see the text a little better. And all you guys have to do is double click in there. Just double click, and Robot could say something like, uh, hey, Penguin, what are you doing? Now, because he's a robot, maybe we want to change his font to something a little bit more robotic. So we could go up to the fonts here. Let's go with like uh, Courier New. That looks a little bit more robotic there. We'll get my exclamation mark back in there and maybe make it a little bit larger font there. And the same thing for Penguin. Um, we'll say something like, um, uh, we'll have him do something like uh, just digging under Oops, the house, because we're talking about learning the word foundation. So we'll have him say he's just digging under the house. Uh, we'll go ahead and make his text a little bit bigger there as well. Very good. Now, what else could we do on this page? Well, a couple of things. Oops, let me make his, his, uh, thought, his speech bubble a little bit bigger there too. There we go. All right. Um, I probably need to give him a shovel. So what I could do is I could pop back over to our Open Clip Art site, and I could go find a shovel real quick. Because if we want him digging, we're probably going to need to give him a shovel. We'll just grab any one of these. This one looks perfectly fine. We'll grab the round point shovel, get the PNG version of it, do a quick copy and paste of that. So we will copy that image, and we'll paste it in here. And here comes our shovel. Make that much smaller for him, and we'll give that to Penguin. Now, one of the things you can do is you can also change the angle of things. So right now, that might not be the best way for him to be holding it. You'll notice there's a little circle at the top that I can move, and I can change the angle of that. So I could go ahead and straighten up that shovel or have it pointing whatever direction we might want it to be pointing. So there we go. Now, another thing that's worth mentioning here is grouping. Uh, a neat feature in Google Presentations is you can group items together if you think that you might need to move them later and you don't want to have them coming apart. Because right now, if I grab the penguin and I go to move him, he's going to be separate from the shovel, and the shovel will be separate from him. But one thing you can do is you can click and drag a box around multiple things to grab more than one item. At that point, if I right-click on them, I can go to Group, and now they become one item. So that if I grab one of them and move it, the other one moves with it as well. And so that's a nice thing if you end up building some things that are a little bit more complicated and have a lot of stuff in there. Now I can always ungroup them. If I needed to say, whoops, let's get those ungrouped and let's move that shovel over just a little bit. And then I could go ahead and regroup them again. There we go. 
Uh, before we move on to our next slide, here are some other things we might want to talk about. One is animations. We've got Penguin and our uh, robot and Penguin chatting here, but it might be fun for it to come in first robot and then Penguin showing what it is they're saying. So let me talk real briefly about how you do animations. Basically, you go to insert and you choose animation. Whoops, got to choose something first. Let me choose his text bubble there and say insert animation. And what I can do is I can choose different ways to animate it. Now, I'm just going to say that I want it to fade in, but I could have it zoom in and spin and do all kinds of stuff, and your students might. Uh, I'm just going to say that it's going to, uh, it's going to fade in, and I'm going to have it fade in um, after whatever happens before that, so the student doesn't have to click. So when the slide loads, I'll choose after previous, meaning whatever just happened before, that'll fade in. Then I'll go to Penguin, and I'll add an animation for his speech bubble, and say it will fade in as well after the previous thing. And so I can very easily go ahead and make those animated. Uh, last thing I'll do on this page, probably want to do something with the background. So let's go in and we'll give this one a different color. We'll say it's going to be a green background. And again, if we wanted to, we could, you know, we could still have fun putting in shapes behind that. I will give them something to stand on, though. We don't have anything for them to stand on. So let's insert some ground for them. Let's just put in a rectangle. And we'll put that right here. And it can be gray, but we don't want it in front of them. So here's another trick. When using Google Presentations, you can right-click on anything, and you can alter the order of it. You can send it backwards or bring it forwards. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's send this backwards. Actually, I'll say send to back. If I say send to back, it'll send it all the way behind everything else. And suddenly, they're now standing on top of that. All right. So um, we've got, hey, Penguin, what are you doing? Just digging under the house. Now let's say I want to make the next slide, and I don't want to go through all that work of redoing the entire thing. No problem at all. I can right-click on this slide and just say Duplicate. And that will make a new version of that slide, and then I can just change the text. So I don't really have to recreate everything. And so he could say something like, so what did you find? And then here's where we could have our word that we're learning. You could say, I just found the foundation. And so without too much work, now I could change this if I wanted to. I could move some things around and adjust stuff, or I could have a, uh, a, a panel where, you know, it's just one of them versus the other. So I could very easily take one off or, or whatever. But if you're just doing it real quick, you can just do a quick duplication there. So we've got a title uh, slide. We've got the first panel of the comic strip. We've got the second panel of the comic strip. Um, you know, I'm doing a real short one here for the example, but obviously you can go as far as you want there. Another thing that we haven't talked about, though, is transitions. If I played this right now, it would work great, but it would pretty much just move from one slide to the next. Just like animations where you animate objects, you can also do an animation for the entire slide called a transition. And for that, uh, we go to slide and we go to change transition and it opens up a special spot here on the animations menu where I can go in and say let's have a transition from one slide to the other and one that works pretty well is if you, if you say slide from right if you're used to you know moving things from right to left and I could apply that to all the slides and so what that's going to do is it's basically going to move each slide from right to left as it brings them through. Well, let's take a look at how we're doing here, and we'll see if there's any other tweaks we need to make, but let's go ahead and run this one. So we'll go View, and we'll go Start Presentation, and let's see how it looks. Okay, so there's our first slide, Robot and Penguin. We'll go ahead and move to the next slide, and it moves across. Hey, Penguin, what are you doing? Just digging under the house. Next slide. So what did you find? I just found the foundation. And there you go. And yeah, very, very, very quick, very, very simple. Uh, we could follow that up with another slide like I did with the other one where they actually give the definition then. So we can make a slide after that that has like that notebook paper background that I did. And you could put in the official definition of foundation. And that would be a very good vocabulary review. And again, if you know, I made this background green, if I wanted this one to look different, I could certainly go in and say, we'll make that one like a light blue or something like that. Very, very, very easy to make those changes changes as you create that. Now, keep in mind, all the normal things that are true about presentations are true here. Students could very easily share this with others, use the big blue share button. They'd be able to go up there and share this 
with other students that they're collaborating with. In that case, they would choose the can edit option so that the students would be able to work together. Or they could share it with the, just the can view option so that people could just view the comic strip. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause there. I know that's a lot of information to throw out there, but figured it would be good just to kind of show you the whole overview there. Let me go ahead and unshare my screen. And I don't know if we've had any questions or comments or things filtering in, so uh, I'm going to take a, a little breather here and see if, uh, Ross, if you've seen some stuff, um, I'll also take a look over in the, uh, the Hangout and see what's there. All right. Ross, have you noticed any questions or comments? We had a good few people just commenting on the different ways that they'd used um, comic strips early on. Um, and I'm just waiting for a couple more. Uh, now that we've had a pause, I'd say this oh, there's a bit of a shout out to State of Tech. Um, to see if there's a refresh there and see if there's been any. I did see in there. Um, several uh, mentions of some web-based ones, and I think uh, Make Beliefs Comics might have been one that we had been thinking of earlier when we were thinking of some of the web-based options that are out there as well. Uh, and yes, that, that is an excellent, an excellent online alternative as well for that. Yeah, very good. All right, questions in the chat room, questions out there. I maybe went too fast. Just to remind everybody, if you want to ask a question, just make a comment. And for what it's worth, um, while people are taking a look there, I will say where this came about, it actually was um, from a project I was working with our fourth graders. I, I'm the tech director for the district, so I typically don't get opportunities always to get out there in the classroom. I find myself, you know, in the office and writing help guides and, you know, buying things and fixing things and stuff like that. And we had an opportunity to do an enrichment class, like an after school optional class for some fourth grade students um, at one of the buildings. And they asked if I'd like to be involved. And I said, hey, yeah, that'd be good. You know, let me get out of the office and, and actually work with the kids. And so I'm working with these fourth graders. And it's amazing how fast they pick stuff up. And I mean, they have no fear. They just jumped right into Google Docs. And that's what we were working on. Google Docs, and so they're ripping through Google Docs and Google presentations and Google spreadsheets. I'm like, well, I need to come up with something that would be, you know, a good option for them. And so uh, this is what we we did for our project. And the students created comic strips in that. Uh, and of course, they were fourth graders, so I mean, their comic strips were a little crazy. Uh, but it really turned out to be a, a great, uh, a great opportunity for them, a great project. And so for sure, it can work with students as low as fourth grade um, from the experiences that I've had with it. But there's no reason you couldn't use the same idea with middle schoolers, high schoolers, you know, whatever the content would be. Okay, Ross, anything? Um, yeah, I've got, I've got one or two here. I, I misread a question, so apologies for that. Um, can you record voices to match the comic strips? Excellent question. Uh, no, there is not a narration option in Google Presentations. Uh, so, you know, you... Uh, like if you're used to PowerPoint, you're, you're where there is a there's a, a narration option there. There is not one here, but I guess if you really wanted to get creative, um, you can insert you know links to multimedia, and so you could have a link that goes out to a recorded audio file. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's an awful lot of work to go through to make that happen. You can also insert YouTube videos, and so you could have like a little commentary there or something like that. But as far as just being able to add audio right in there and have it play, that's that's currently not something that is available in, in, in Google Presentations. We have another one here from Darren who asked, um, can this be printed in a format similar to a Sunday comic strip? Now, there's a great question. Absolutely. Let me go ahead and head back over to sharing that screen, and I'll show you what that can look like. Thank you for that question. Although printing, we don't, we don't believe in printing now, do we? It's, we're all paperless, right? <laughs> uh, well, let's say I wanted to print this out. Uh, you've got a lot of options with presentations. If you go up to File, and you go down to uh, Print Preview, give this a second to load up here. Um, you'll see that what you get is um, several options here as to, as to how you want to print these. Uh, it's under the option here where it says slide layout. Uh, you can print them just as individual slides 
or you can say, okay, let's turn these into like a handout with one slide per page or with two slides per page. Let these kind of refresh for you. Or with three slides per page. Now, that'd be perfect for ours since we've got three. So right there, boom, you know, you could just easily print that out, cut that off, and you've got an excellent you know, spot right there. Or you can go down as far as, as you need to go there. Now, at this point, I could go ahead and actually print this out, but I can download it as a PDF, um, and you know, that would be another option to be able to just share it as, as a static PDF afterwards as well. Uh, and what you're seeing down here is just some spots where people could write notes if it was like a like a, a presentation they were taking. But absolutely, that would be a great way to be able to quickly uh, print out that as a as a Sunday comic strip sort of look to it. Yeah, good question. Thanks. All right, anything okay, else? Okay, we have one or two more here. Give me a second, scroll down. Um, so let's see. Okay, so a uh, question, is it possible to create animations for each character um, sure. for the comic strip? Yeah, um, you know, the animations that are in Google presentations have somewhat of a limitation to them compared to like maybe PowerPoint. Um, maybe they'll be adding more in the future or something like that. But yes, anything that you can click on, you can animate. So um, we just animated these, you know, bubbles to have them talk. But I could have like the robot, you know, come into, you know, the, the frame. If I clicked on him, I could go ahead and insert animation. And I probably want to move him up higher because I don't want his thought, his speech bubble showing up before him. So I can just drag his animation anywhere I want. I'll put it up higher. And I can say, well, what's he going to do? You know, is uh, he going to fly in or zoom in or spin in or something like that? Um, I'd have to kind of play with these and see what they look like. I guess we'll just try some and see. Let's see what fly in looks like. I'm not actually totally sure how that's going to look. We'll do a quick play here and it will kind of show that for us. So what happens? Oh, there he is. So he just comes zooming in from, or flying in. I guess that was a, a zoom in, no, a fly in, a fly in. He comes flying in from the side. So I can control him coming in from the side. It does not look like I have an option for what direction he comes in from. He just comes in from the left. So we certainly could do that. We could have Penguin just standing there, and then the robot could fly in. Um, you know, other than that, um, it looks like he could fly out, so he could leave the frame afterwards, um, as well as you've got fade out, so you could have the thought, the speech bubbles go away afterwards, and spin, obviously. I guess we could have, we could, maybe the penguin thinks his joke is really funny, and he spins the, uh, the, the shovel here. Let's ungroup these, and maybe we'll grab the shovel. And we'll say that it spins. Ah, making this up as we go. <laughs> we'll see what this looks like. Uh, so let's go ahead and play that and see what happens. Um, if uh, he speaks and he speaks and he spins his shovel because it's a cute joke. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you've got some limits there as to what you can do with it. But you definitely can add more animations than I had shown in the, uh, the original one there. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Patsy was saying that she was thinking, I just didn't follow up to the question about, um, about adding audio. Uh, she was saying that she could um, export it to iMovie and then create a, a voiceover. And so that was just a bit of a follow-up on that. Sure. Bob Smith also had a question. Is it possible to save the presentation as a WMV or MPEG file um, to upload on, onto YouTube? Good question. Um, well, when it comes to doing the export, um, really the only um, options you have for, for downloading it would be you can convert it into a Microsoft PowerPoint format. You can convert it into a PDF. You can make it into just images, into PNGs uh, or JPEGs. Um, but if you want to really capture it as a movie, no, there's not an export for that. But wow, there are so many options you would have. All you would really want to do is basically run the slideshow and then use a screen capturing tool. And I mean, there's, there's lots of them. Now, I'm a PC guy, so I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to think off the top of my head what some of the Mac alternatives are. But I know in the PC world, I use Camtasia. Now, that's a, a, a purchased item, but there is one called Cam Studio, and Cam Studio is totally free. There's no, there's no cost for Cam Studio at all, and it's a screen capture tool. And so you could start up Cam Studio, tell it I want to grab this region of the screen, 
go ahead and start playing that presentation in Cam Studio would just be recording all of that stuff as it goes and then it saves it as like an, an AVI and then you can do whatever you want with it after that. So yeah, you absolutely could turn this into something that takes advantage of the sliding and the animation and all that and you could throw your own narration in there. Now if you had like Camtasia, it lets you add voice narration so you really could turn this into quite a neat video by the time you're done. It would go from just a comic strip to actually a full-fledged, you know, uh, cartoon, I guess, at that point. Yeah. Great idea. Anything and, else? And uh, Tia has a question. Yeah, Tia has a question. Um, she'd like to hear more about what Eric um, does to help teach kids about responsible use of images. Does he teach them about creative commons, etc.? Sure, good good question. Now, again, I don't have the opportunity to typically be in a classroom, and so um, that was one of the very few times, and I was a teacher, I was a math teacher to begin with, and then transitioned into technology, and I've been doing this now uh, for the last 13 years. I've been in the district 20 years total. So I have not been in a, a teaching role for about 13 years, but, but yes, um, when I was giving this presentation, that's why I took them to the site like Open Clip Art. And so we do go to, um, there, there's several of them and they're linked in the presentation there, uh, but openclipart.org is a really good example of that. And we do have that discussion and that was one thing I talked to the students about is we talked about why would we use a site like this and what's the purpose behind this and uh, we talked about copyright and so forth. So it fit in nicely to the enrichment class I was doing with those students. But yes, that is something that you know is to be part of our curriculum as far as when we're, when we're instructing students about doing technology is we also talk about um, appropriate use of of images and information. A lot of times it fits into our, our English classes because they do a lot with plagiarism and citing and things like that and it just fits in really nicely there. 